In this lesson, we'll be painting this stylized citrus still life with acrylic color. So let's get into it. We wanted this tutorial to be relatively straightforward, so the reference image needed to be fairly good. I bought all this citrus fruit at my local greengrocer and set it up in a top-down format. I chose an old china plate that had a fairly intricate design on it, as I thought it would be fun to try and recreate, and a simple cup and saucer. I assembled the fruit around them, popped in a tea bag into the teacup, and took a photo of the scene. After I had the photo, I drew up an outline of all the elements. You can find these images and the full PDF lesson plan on our website. Now we have the outline, we need to transfer it onto the canvas. This can be done a few ways. The easiest is to print the outline image out onto A3 sizing. Shade the backside with a pencil, lay the shaded side onto a 30 by 40 centimetre canvas and retrace the outline. The graphite will transfer nicely onto the surface. The second method is the grid system. Simply draw up a grid over the image and upsize the grid onto a canvas. The third method is drawing it up directly. Use a sharp HB pencil for this. Whatever method you use, don't start the painting until you are happy with your drawing. Use a plate as a template to get nice circles and try to draw in the outline shapes lightly first to see that they look right. Then add all the details and darken it. Once the drawing is in, we can start the fun part, adding the paint. We are using the 24 piece signature acrylic colour paint set. And the first step is to lay a thin coat of titanium white over the entire surface of the canvas. We do this for a few reasons. The first is it seals the drawing so any loose graphite won't discolour any colours that go over the top. The other thing it does is that it lightens the line work so that the drawing won't be visible through the paint that will be laid on top. Even though both of these pieces of crockery are white, they are not a pure white. The saucer has a blue tint and the plate has a slight yellow tinge. So we tint the titanium white and lay it into each plate. A little umber is mixed in also and the middle of the plate is painted in. I then mix a touch of phthalo blue into the titanium white and paint it over the cup and saucer. Some of that umber tint is painted into the inside of the cup and also onto the side of the cup away from the light source. Remember the light is coming in from the upper right corner. I then add an umber tint onto the bottom of the teacup. Before we add colour, I will just mention it is also a good idea to keep an old canvas beside you to test any mixes on. Squeeze out some phthalo blue titanium and a touch of black onto the palette and add it onto the canvas from the upper right. I want the coat to start light so I use more white and mix more phthalo blue into the mix as I move across the canvas. The black mutes the colour so that it doesn't look too bright. Next I create a colour from titanium white and brilliant red again with a touch of black and blend this in from the blue getting darker as I reach the other side of the canvas. All of the colours used and any mixes created are in that PDF so we won't go into it into too much detail but this is the basic order to follow on each fruit. First paint the peel around each fruit then paint in the flesh of the fruit. Add a little titanium white to the mix and paint in the pith. In this case of an orange, it is a very faint orange tone. Once the first one has been finished, follow the same steps with the next one. Because orange is a slightly translucent tone, the white point of the canvas gives some vibrancy to the colour. This orange has been cut differently, so the segments appear in a different shape. The light hits the top part of the fruit, yet the back side of the orange is in shadow, so the orange can be darkened with some red. Obviously, because this is acrylic, it dries very quickly, and the lighter colours can be added over the top of the darker colours, like the white here. This gives the flesh a more realistic look. You can just keep going until it looks right. Glazing is another important technique that is ideal with acrylics because unlike oils, you don't have to wait days for the underlying colour to dry to add the top colour. The ruby grapefruit has a very unusual colour to it and it has a light yellow peel. 
The red is created with crimson and a touch of lemon yellow and titanium white. Magenta is a fairly translucent colour and quite warm too. The addition of white mutes the tone a bit. Mixing colours can be trial and error but the more you do it the better you get at it. Paint in a thin lemon yellow line around the edge of the grapefruit and paint the pith in with titanium white tinted with a touch of lemon yellow. Medium yellow is painted onto the peel off the section below and darkened with some burnt umber to give it some shape. Then lemon yellow is painted into the area closest to the light. The corner sits up against the larger half and it casts a shadow over it. For the shadow on the red flesh, phthalo blue can be mixed into the red to darken it. Refer to the image and bear in mind the light source, darkening the appropriate areas. Now the fruit has all been done, we can move on to the crockery. I squeeze out some phthalo blue, a touch of magenta and add the same amount of acrylic gloss medium. Using a rigger brush, carefully lay the line work in around the saucer. Gloss medium is a clear medium that can be added to paint to create translucence within the colour and it also increases the flowability of the paint so that it runs smoother. When laying in a fine line work with a rigger brush, it's important to keep the brush movements flowing and smooth. Any areas where the line is thicker can be cleaned up with white paint. Remember that cup is glossy and there will be a reflection so a pink block can be laid onto the cup. Detail really adds to any still life so a sort of logo and wording can be suggested simply. We use that gloss medium again mixed with yellow ochre to depict some tea sitting in the cup. Make sure there is enough gloss medium in the mix so it is clear enough to see the tea bag and the shadow. Then redefine the tea bag. A subtle shadow can be created with a little bit of phthalo blue, titanium white with just a touch of black. Now we can create the intricate work on our plate here. I create a mix of phthalo blue and gloss medium and lay in the line work paying close attention to the reference photo. This may look complicated but if you look at each flourish individually it's not that hard. Finish one then move on to the next and you will find it's finished in no time. In many ways this project is created more like one would create a watercolour painting. 
certainly the colours gain vibrancy through the white point of the canvas and the addition of gloss medium allows one to lay down a wash so any underlying colour and detail can be seen beneath the coat. The success with a project like this is also very dependent on an accurate drawing like a watercolour project too. Acrylic however is a lot more forgiving than watercolour. The final stage is laying in the shadows. For the shadows we have created a fairly dark grey mix of titanium white, black and phthalo blue. You will find shadows always look better if they have a cool tint to them. The light source is emanating from the right so obviously the shadows will be cast to the left. In most cases the edge of a shadow is probably softer than the way we are laying them in here. But with this project blocking them in like this suits the stylized approach of the painting. The final step is to lay in the shadows cast on the plate. For these shadows we create a tone by adding a touch of the mix we used for the shadows to some gloss medium and paint it into the appropriate areas. The ratio of paint to medium is roughly 10% paint to 90% medium. Gloss medium dries very quickly so get it on as quickly as possible or the tone won't be consistent. Well thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and if you don't want to do this project hopefully you have picked up some cool techniques to use with your art. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.